Good morning, folks. We're starting at the alert map. The nuclear contamination continues in the U.S. Southwest. WIP has had problems in 2014, and they've just found so much underground contamination of americium, they had to cut short their search and go back to regroup. Radiation is one of the environmental factors we'll be monitoring across the U.S. and Canada in the Mobile Observatory over the next year. Top stories today all revolve around the M7 solar flare yesterday morning. Uyen System Candidate No. 5 created Cyclone Candidate Jack out of that puny low within about two hours of the flare. They now expect a significant cyclone to develop by tonight or tomorrow. Tremendous vapor collection already there. To the east of Jack, not much changes. Heavy rain in northern Australia and a system remaining at New Zealand as well. In Europe, the Mediterranean low is now headed north up into the continent while a line continues cresting over Ireland, the UK, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. To the west, we still might have some east coast storms, but the northwest Pacific and north central states hold the lows of interest. We can have thunderstorms where it's warm, more snowstorms on the backside. The wind map takes all the guesswork out of the 24-hour temperature delta from IntelliCast. Let's come to the solar wind where the corona hole stream speed continues to ramp but does so catching some denser waves along the way, which, at higher speeds, have our shield really working to keep that plasma out. We do have minor instability. The bigger story, of course, is the solar flare. The surface surge is something of interest here. That electric box around the flare could hold every planet we've discovered in our solar system, maybe twice. Umbral magnetic fields carrying significant plasma broke open and released a significant coronal mass ejection into space. Full halo visible, so it will hit Earth, with stereo confirming plasma on the Earth orbital line. Both NASA and NOAA expect Earth impact at the same time we stated last night, any time from very late tonight to midday tomorrow. Remember that we have smaller shock waves out ahead of that M7 ejection, successive shocks on deck set for Easter Sunday tomorrow. Remember, Earth was sharing this magnetic connection point and the flare indeed surged Earth's magnetic portal, sending protons to Earth and causing a continuing radiation storm. It's at level one only. It was only a matter of time before one of these sunspots let rip. The departing spots are still the best candidates and spent the majority of their time on the Earth-facing disk very, very quiet. We still see multiple mixing points, especially down to the right where red surrounds blue at the backside. Incoming spots are significantly smaller and lacking a lot of complexity. It is nice though to see an excess of positivity in this region, given the negative solar features that reigned over the last day. Unfortunately, the primary negative influence was the southern coronal hole. We knew from yesterday morning's news that yesterday was the day it would begin to affect earthquakes. A 7.2 struck Mexico about 90 minutes after the solar flare, followed by a 6.6 .6 in Papua New Guinea, a definitive uptick from the last few days, although overnight the hole lost a tiny bit of its power over on the left side there. Lastly, it's a bird. It's a plane. Actually, it's Mercury heading in for solar conjunction later this month. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone. Thank you.